So this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the Maya Graph Editor again. So this is going to be part two. All right, so we're going to look at uh, four different things. We're going to look at breaking tangents, the auto tangent function, non-weighted and weighted tangents, and locked tangents and free tangents. I have some animation that I did for the video, and it's just really basic. Just animated some cubes and some uh, some spheres just to demonstrate how the tangents work. All right, so we have an animation of a cube, just sliding across the ground here, then changing direction and ramping up into a different uh, altitude here. And this is our these are our curves for it. You can see the Y curve looks almost like the animation does. So that's our up and down movement, and then we have our X our X movement, which is our right and left movement. All right, so let's take a look at breaking tangents. The reason why I use break tangents most of the time is to have characters take steps. So basically how it works, if you drag a box over one of these keyframes in the, in the graph editor, and then you just go up to where the tangent buttons are on the far right, right here, it looks like a V. First of all, you'll notice that the Bezier handles on both sides of the keyframe are pink. If we select one side, it turns yellow, and we can bend it. But when you select the entire key by dragging a box over it, both sides of the Bezier handle are pink. If we hit the break tangent button right here, you see now one side's pink, one side's blue, and now you can bend the Bezier handles independent of each other. We can also put them back, if you select the key again, there's a button right beside the break tangent button, and that just puts the tangent back together. And you can see both Bezier handles turn pink again. They're still bent, but if you hit any one of the tangent buttons, hit flat or spline, it'll snap back to a flat or spline tangent. The Bezier handles are back to moving together. All right, so the reason why I would do this, as I mentioned before, it's like it's I use it often for a character taking a step, but you can use it for a million other things. So the way I would normally do this is I would select the two keys I want to affect, where I want to affect the in-between area of these two keyframes. So right here we have the cube ramping up to a higher position. So I'll place my uh, time marker right in between these two keys. With them both selected, I'll hit the break tangent button. You'll see the Bezier handles changing color. And what I usually do is just select both those inside handles and just use my middle mouse button to drag. You can do these individually. And what it does is just, it causes the animation to change course very drastically. So you can see we were moving along the, the Y axis here, and then it just pops up immediately, and we're gonna have a bit of a bounce there. So if I drag over that animation now, if you watch the cube, the motion is pretty much exactly what you see in the, in the graph editor. It saves you from setting more keys than you need. It's just a way of working clean. All right, so that's breaking tangents. Let's take a look at auto tangents. Auto tangents are something that they added in more recent versions of Maya. Auto tangent really is just another helper, just like these other tangents help you out. They get you part of the way there. You still have to sculpt your animation by using the Bezier handles, bending your curves to get the, the, the desired movement. But the auto tangent button is really handy when, when you have all the translates and all the rotates and even all the scales and you have tons of curves going on in here. You can just select everything and hit the auto tangent button. It gets you closer to your finished product. It doesn't finish it for you, but it does get you close. This is what it looks like all splined. And with everything selected, if you drag a box over anywhere between two keys, it'll select the whole curve. And we hit our auto tangent button. It just sort of fixes and smooths everything out. I'll show you another example. Here's our translate X. Now we would want this animation to ease out at the end. So let's select the entire curve. we we'll hit the auto tangent button. You'll see it flattens the beginning and the end of the animation, which is usually what you want. Let's just take a look at these last two keys. I would still want to finesse this and bend that curve a little bit just to get it to ease into that last pose a little bit more gradually. But it does sort of finesse your curves for you a little bit. It's just a nice little helper. All right, we're going to bring this cube down. And I have another animation down below here of a ball, just like the last tutorial. I'm going to bring this up into frame. And it's a ball just going in a circle again. Now it's just blocked. I haven't refined any of this animation, so it's sort of going in a diamond shape. Now I'd have to I'd have to round out some of these curves. Just like in the last video, I'd have to round out some of these translate Y and translate X curves to get it to move in a more rounded path. Now I'm going to show you how to do that with, with weighted and non-weighted curves. Alright, so normally I like to work with non-weighted curves, and the reason why 
Now when we bend these curves, if I select one side of the Bezier handle and the middle mouse button drag, as I bend this, you can see there's no limit to how much I can bend this. Even if I scale the graph editor, and we're looking at values in the hundreds here, if you look on the side, there's no, there's no limit to how far I can bend this. And if we look at our animation, you can see that it just goes off frame. So I've caused that ball to go up and down really far. Now if we go to weighted, to change these to weighted, you can select the entire curve. Even if you just select one key, it's going to affect the entire curve. In the graph editor menu set, go to curves, and right at the bottom you'll see non-weighted, which is what it's on now, and then we have weighted. So if we click on weighted, you'll see that the bezier handle changed a little bit. There's a little more of a ball at the end of the bezier handle. With weighted tangents, when you go to bend them, no matter how far I bend this, it, there's a limit. They have a weight to them now. So we can only go so far. I never work with weighted tangents like this. If I do change it to weighted, it's because I'm going to cha also change it to free tangents rather than locked. And I'll show you the reason why I would do that. Just select one of the keys in the graph editor menu if we go up to tangents. So right now they're locked. If we go to free, right at the bottom here, you'll see the Bezi handle changed again. And now it has a little box at the end. So what that allows us to do is when we select one side of the Bezi handle and we use our middle mouse button, we're back to no limit, but you have all this flexibility now. So what I like to use this for is getting things to hang a little bit longer without having to set more keys. Just spreading out the top of a curve like this is really, really handy. If I wanted to get the same thing with, with non-weighted keys, I would have to set more keys and drag these down to get this curve to stay more flat. With free tangents, I can just grab one side and stretch it out, and that will allow our ball to stay down in, in the translate Y dimension longer. So it just flattens that, that area out. But you mean you can bend this in any way you want, but it just gives you a lot more flexibility with the actual curve. And I did the same thing at the top. Now if I select this entire curve again, and we go to curves, we can put it back to, to non-weighted. And if I hit my spline button, it goes right back to original. You can't use free tangent weights when you're on non-weighted tangents. If you try to change it, it won't allow you. You'll get an error message at the bottom. So you have to change it. And if you want to use uh, free tangent weights, you have to first go to curves, change the whole curve to weighted. And then once it's on weighted, you can go and change it to free tangent weights. And I'll usually only do that for one curve, curve that I would like the tangents to be freed up on. Otherwise, I leave everything on non-weighted tangents. So you can see that adds a lot more flexibility between non-weighted tangents and weighted tangents and lock tangent weights and using free tangent weights in conjunction with, with the ability to break tangents. You can get a lot of flexibility with these curves and it really allows you to, to sculpt your curves and customize your animation. All right, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and it was useful. I'll see you in the next one.